Yo, yo, yo! Welcome back to the MMA Short Show. As always, your boy, Stephen Boosters. And guys, man, Khalil Roundtree might have just gave me the best birthday gift of all time last weekend, man. You know, one of my biggest flexes as an MMA fan, you know, as somebody who has a birthday December 5th, you know, ever since I think like 09, I'm pretty sure it was when Big Country knocked out Brennan Schaub. John Jones only lost to Matt Hamill, even though he beat the absolute crap out of him. And I'm pretty sure Kimbo Slice and Houston Alexander fought in a snooze fest, but at least Kimbo had a crazy knockdown or a crazy slam knockdown and everything. It was it was absolutely wild to see on my birthday. And, you know, I've been blessed. I've been able to see Max Holloway beat Aldo twice, you know, around my birthday. John Jones beat Machida on my birthday. I've gotten to witness a lot of crazy birthday, you know, cards, especially last year. And I know you guys are sitting here saying, like, man, there's a card every weekend nowadays. But even back in 09, 08, whatever, they've been doing it ever since then. There was 10 cards a year. They've always focused on having that first weekend of December. They've always had that card. So for me to be that blessed and to get a present like this, man, Khalil Roundtree with one of the craziest knockouts I've seen in a while. And it may be not the knockout. I don't want to say the knockout. I can't hype up the knockout too much. It's the, even though it was nasty, it was more so just the devastation of what he did, man. And, like, oh, it was one of the... Probably one of the most badass things I've ever seen. When With him just standing there with his fist up in the air, like, I will do this to you if you decide to fight back. And more so, like, warning the ref, like, hey, man, I will destroy this guy right now if you don't call it. Like, that might have been the most badass thing I've ever seen. To have the to have the patience, to have the poise, to have the control to not just jump down and try to murder this dude is is truly one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And it was it was more so not necessarily like a pity thing of like, oh, I just feel bad. I, you know, I'm going to show some remorse here. No, it was like, hey, man, I could absolutely fucking murder you right now if I want to, but I see you're out and I'm not going to do it. Like, it was so badass, man. And yeah, does it help that it's Anthony Smith? And I'm never, I don't like talking shit about fighters, man. But if if I had to name two of my top three least favorite fighters, Bilal Muhammad and Anthony Smith will be in um, in those every single time in one of those orders. Those two will be in that order somehow. And no hate towards him right now. I don't want to shit on him while he's down. But yeah, it was just icing on the cake to watch it, you know, Clear Roundtree finally get his flowers to finally get his appreciation from all these fans. You know, me personally, I'm a Muay Thai guy. So like I've always, you know, kind of kind of, you know, went towards these guys, you know, kind of just fell in love with the, the strikers, man. We all kind of do. But, you know, we all have our th certain things. People love jujitsu out there. People love judo. People love wrestling. People love boxing. You know, there's certain things that we gravitate towards. And I just so happen to be a Muay Thai guy. So I'm not going to sit here in front and act like I've been a Cleo Roundtree fan ever since he came to the UFC because I'm pretty sure he lost his first couple of fights in the UFC. But I'm pretty sure it was, I think it was his first win in the UFC in 2017 when he knocked out Paul Craig. It was one of the one of the t first times I was like, ooh, that guy right there, man. The kicks, the leg kicks, the body power, you know, the body shots, the knockout, man. I was like, oh, okay, this is what I like to see here. This guy's filthy. And then, you know, for him to go on to knock out Gokan Zaki, who's one of the better kickboxers to ever come over to the UFC, was absolutely mind-boggling. You know, his oblique kicks is one of my favorite techniques of all time. I love that thing. I know people were calling it to be, you know, removed for the sport. That's one of the coolest kicks of all time, and I love it. It was so fucking cool. And another thing that I absolutely love about the guy, too, that I think I gravitate towards him for is, like, not only when he gets you knocked down, is he the type of person that, you know, isn't going to like wail and swing around just to get you out of there. This dude is so diabolical that he's going to see you down by the fence or whatever. And he has multiple highlight reel, highlight reel, highlight reel after highlight reel where he aims for the body more than he does the head. He'll throw one of the most devastating body kicks we've ever seen, like Carl Roberson fight that he just had a couple years ago. What that man did, he's like, okay, I got you knocked down. I'm going to absolutely blast your ribs. I'm going to blast your back. I'm going to blast your stomach. Like, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And to see certain techniques, man, you're going to love them. And, you know, he's not going to go down as one of the best of all time. He's not going to go down as, you know, a top fighter of all time or somebody's favorite or whatever. But he's up there for me, man. He's up there for one of my top five, top ten, you know, current fighters and top probably 15 of all time. I love the guy, truly. And he kind of reminds me of, like, Anthony Rumble Johnson. And I think that's kind of why I like him so much. You know, he's probably got better kicks, but he probably lacks the power that Anthony Rumble has, but he's still just absolutely devastating. And it's cool to see him finally get his flowers, because if you guys have followed Khalil Roundtree, for every one of these knockouts that he gets, every one of these big ones he wins, you know, he will get, he'll suffer a knockout loss to Johnny Walker. You know, he'll suffer a loss to Ian Kutalabe somehow, where you're like, damn, really? Or he'll lose to a guy that you probably never even heard of, Martian Bro uh, Procnia. Like, it sits there scratching your head like, damn, this guy's so damn good. And it's like, man, but then he has just these bad breaks or something. He had a tight loss or something. So it's so fucking awesome to see him get his flowers. He deserves it. And like I said, it helps a little bit that it was Anthony Lionheart Smith. 
But, you know, it's just so cool. And if we're looking, guys, if we're truly looking here, I know a lot of people probably didn't like the call out of Alex Pejea. But if we're being honest here, man, Alex Pejea got a fucking title shot after one fight. He beat Jan Blackwood in a three-rounder. Cleo Roundtree has been there since 2016, you know, proving to himself, like, hey, man, I'm going to keep going to the gym, keep getting better, keep, you know, keep evolving. You know how hard it would be to go out there and to, you know, suffer some losses after some wins, and you're kind of like sitting there at 30, you know, 30 years old, where you're like, man, you know, do I have this? Do I really have this? 22-year-old, 23-year-olds out here that are doing the damn thing. And for him to just keep doing it and to keep trusting himself, to keep evolving, to keep training, keep getting better, man, how can you not like this guy? How can you not like this guy? And there's no way in hell you can tell me right now that a guy like Yuri Prohoshka or Alex Pejea or Jamal Hill or Jan Blakowicz or Alexander Rakic or Johnny Walker, any one of these striking guys, like, there's no way you can tell me that they're going to absolutely just destroy Khalil Roundtree. The power that that man possesses, the striking ability that guy possesses, he can fight absolutely anybody. He could knock out Alex Pereira. He can knock out Yuri Prohoshka. He can knock out Jamal Hill. He can knock out any one of these guys, and it's he easily can. And, yes, they can knock him out too, which makes these fights so much fun. And, you know, as much as I maybe don't like it, you know, in the world right now where it's not necessarily like performance based anymore, it's not necessarily how many wins you get in a row. It's not necessarily if you're the best one and if you're the most deserving of the title right now, it's who gets the seats and who gets the asses in the seats, who gets the views. You know, Alex Pejo, like we just said, completely made a huge, he made a Hall of Fame career run off of seven UFC fights all because of his his whole ri rivalry with Al or, uh, Izzy, like Israel Adesanya. It is insane to me. And you're telling me Khalil Roundtree doesn't deserve one little look at a top five round. Like, I'm excited for this, man. He deserves this shit. But the one thing I will say that absolutely terrifies me, man, is Magomed and Goliath. That guy, for any one of y'all, like any one of your top 205ers right now, it's as exciting as it is, as much as we got these young up and, you know, up and coming killers, these knockout artists like Jamal Hill, Yuri, you know, Alex Pea, Cleo Roundtree, Johnny Walker can be even thrown in there. Alexander Rakic, you can name all these guys, you know, for all every single one of them. You know, even if they hit you, the only one that possesses the ability to just lay on you and make a fight very boring and to not get hit is Magomed Ankalaev. So if Cleo Roundtree gets ma matched up with him, that could be the end of him. You know, but at the end of the day, this is what's so fun about 205 finally. It's been dead for years. And to see somebody like Cleo Roundtree kind of make it more exciting, Alex Pay to make it more exciting, Yuri Prohoshka, Jamal Hill, like it's let's go, guys. This is fucking fun. So it's awesome to see Cleo Roundtree get his, you know, get his props. And thank you for the birthday gift, man. That was one of the coolest knockouts I've seen in a while. It was absolutely devastating. So as your boy, as always, Steven Mousteris. And let me know what you guys think about Cleo Roundtree. Do you guys think he deserves a title shot? Do you want to see him fight for the title? Who do you guys think he should fight next? I mean, I wouldn't be mad at that Johnny Walker rematch, you know. That's definitely a huge fight there. So you guys let me know what y'all think. It's always your boy, Steven Moose Darius. Let's go.